right, chapter 4.6b is still about the quadratic formula. Today we're going to look at two things, uh, the quadratic formula with imaginary numbers, and then we're also going to look at a parabola problem that all Algebra 2 students must come to understand. So first off, let's look at some higher level quadratic formula problems because on your test there will be imaginary numbers, and we need to know how to deal with them whenever they pop up. Um, 12x squared plus 4x plus 15 equals 0. Again, I'm going to use the same tactics, hopefully better than I did yesterday where a is equal to 12, b is equal to 4, and c is equal to 15. Again, I will write my formula out as negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which turns into negative 4 plus or minus square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 12 times 15 all over 2 times 12. Now this is where I separate those things out and try to find my answer. So first off, negative 4 is there. Plus or minus square root of, I don't know what, so let's see what that gives us. 4 squared minus 4 times 12 times 15 equals negative 704 all over 24. So now what we have to do, first off we know this is um, imaginary so I would probably start off by putting 4 plus or minus, um, actually I wouldn't even do that, just take your 704 and let's break this down here. So I know that's 4 times something because it ends in 04. So 704 divided by 4 is 176. 176, does that divide by 4? Yes, it does. It's 4 times 44. And of course, this is 4 times 11, which means 2, 2, and 2 come out. That's 2 times 2, which is 4, times the third 2, which is 8. Don't forget, it was imaginary, so it would be 8i root, whatever your last number is, which is 11, all over 24. And the last thing we have to do is divide all these by whatever number all of them can go with and in this case it is 4 so you end up with negative 1 plus or minus 2i root 11 all over 12. Now when you do that on the computer you're gonna have to type in negative 1 plus 2i root 11 over 12 and negative 1 minus um, but again as long as you can get there that is the good thing. Again, with these i's with the imaginary numbers you have to make sure you are careful to actually take out the number as well as simplify whatever is going down there. So yesterday we kind of looked at how to use the calculator to simplify ugly decimals. Today what we're doing is looking at how to simplify just ugly numbers and still have to use the actual algebra to get it done. This one here again, going through the same sequence, a is 9, b is 3, c is 16. Formula is negative b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which is negative parentheses 3, plus or minus 3 squared minus 4, 9, and 16, all over 2 times 9. Again, simplifying one thing down uh, at a time, we end up with negative 3, plus or minus root, I don't know what again, so let's go ahead and do that part underneath, um, parentheses 3 squared minus 4, 9, 16, which is negative 567. That's scary to me, but let's see what happens. That's 7, 12, yes, yeah, so 18. All over 18. So again, going off to the side to kind of check the 567 because we need to. Again, the reason I gave you 4, 9, 25, 49, and 121 is because once you check those, that's usually the only ones you really need to worry about mainly because once you check those, um, you probably found out that you cannot simplify the number that you're looking at. Get a little zoom on that for you there. But either way, 567 divided by 4 is obviously not going to happen. 567 divided by 9 is 63. And of course, nine, 63 is 9 times 7. So what we're looking at here is 9 times 9, which means a 3 times a 3. 3 times 3 makes 9i, again i because it's negative, root 7 all over 18. And similar to the last one, you can pull a 3 out of all these, so it's negative 1 
plus or minus 3i root 7 all over 6, I believe is what it would end up being. And again, in the end, you need to put on the computer 1 plus that and 1 minus that. But on your test, you could leave it as negative 1 plus or minus the 3i root 7 part because I understand what it means. It's just the computer wants you to actually do it. And MathXL does not have a plus or minus button for some odd reason. They never decided to put that in there. So the second part of our day is about the parabola problem. There is an application problem that deals with a projected object. That means an object that is thrown. In order to answer this question, it requires our full scope of experience. Uh, the shape of a projected object is typically the shape of an upside down parabola because whenever you throw it, it starts here or starts at some place. It goes up and then it comes back down and you can see that that kind of has a parabolic shape. The uh, formula typically has a couple of key values. Number one, you're going to probably see a negative 16 t squared, and you're going to see some number usually over here. If not, that means something else. Uh, the negative 16 is actually how gravity affects the object. If it's a realistic question, it's probably going to be a negative 16, or if they're talking, that's in feet, by the way, and if they're talking meters, I think it's 9 point something. I don't remember the number for physics. But again, negative 16 is usually because that's the speed of gravity uh, on the object in that equation and C represents the height because we understand that it is the y-intercept which means that this is the situation and that is C and the object is projected obviously that is your y-intercept that is where you threw it alright um, the thing you have to keep mind of is that because it's a object like this there are two intercept points and one of those is not going to make sense which I'll talk about in just a second Again, you are going to be asked a series of questions. One thing it will say is how high was the object when it was projected. Again, the y-intercept represents that. That is how high it was. It should be at C. So whenever they want to know how high it was when they threw it or whenever it was dropped, that would be C. Uh, how high is the object after t seconds? Look at the fact that t is what you plug in, and t corresponds with h, which usually represents the height. So if they want to know how high it was after t seconds, simply plug in the t to find the corresponding h and that will tell you uh, what is the maximum height this is where you have to use your x equals negative b over 2a although it's not an x it's a key t but it's the same thing to us because we do the same thing as we would normally do which is use b use a plug those in and then actually use your calculator to actually find those numbers and again the maximum height is going to be at this point and then the last question it asks is how long does it take for the object to hit the ground? Okay, and this is again where people get lost. If the object did this and the parabola does this, the value of h equals zero, which of course is the height, is going to have two different spots. One of them is going to be after you threw it and one of them is going to be before you threw it, which means time machine going backwards is not going to make sense. Typically, you do not want the negative. Typically, in a problem like this, it's going to be a positive and negative answer. You do not want the negative because there's no way that the object hit the ground a half second before you threw it or two seconds before you threw it. We don't know that. So you can eliminate anything on this side because all we care about is this, which means this value is when it hits the ground because that is the actual ground and also that is where the height is zero. The key part to understand that is, again, the height must be zero. So we will use the quadratic formula to find those values and again try our best not to mess up because with the ugly question like that it is easy to do. So let's look at this example and then let's see what we can do and move on to the homework and try to get some of these things out of the way. A part of a science experiment an object is tossed from a random window in a building the function h of or h equals negative 16 t squared plus 12 t plus 30 gives the height h again that's the height after t seconds uh, of the object is reach. Okay. What does a 30 represent? So again, the first question they're going to ask you is what does a 30 represent? That means it was 30 feet uh, high. I used the word projected. I probably can't spell because I'm I really did mess that up. P R O J E C T E D because I was thinking about what I was going to say at the same time. I was going to say tossed, but of course, while I was spelling the word projected, I realized that I was using the word projected. Anyway, 30 feet high when projected or tossed, but again, the 30 represents your y-intercept. That means that the object was 30 feet high when everything started. 
what is the maximum height? This is where you now have to use the key x because we're looking for really the vertex point. So what we're going to do is our x equals negative b, which is negative 12, over 2 times negative 16. I'm going to do that in here because I think it'll be a lot nicer for me. So negative 12 um, divided by, no, I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to do that here. So negative 12 over, what, negative 32, which is going to be a positive number. So 12 over 32 as a fraction is 3 eighths. That's what I meant to do with my calculator. So 3 eighths. So what I am now going to do is take my 3 eighths and I'm going to plug it in for t because that will tell me 3 eighths means it takes 3 eighths seconds for it to reach its maximum height. That is not my answer. This is how long it takes for you to find it because again t tells me how far across the h is actually how high it is. So again the 3 eighths that I just found is the answer that's going to lead me to it so I do my negative 16 times 3 eighths squared plus 12 times 3 eighths plus 30 and I get the answer of 32.25 again plug that into your problem equation and that will give you your height what is the height of the object after 0.9 seconds? Again, if I want the actual height after 0.9 seconds, we plug it in. So we do negative 16 times 0.9 squared plus 12 times 0.9 plus 30, which is, I don't know what, negative 16 times 0.9 squared plus 12 times 0.9 plus 30, hopefully I hit all those buttons right, it says 27.84, and that does at least make sense because if it was higher than 32 feet, it means that that would not be the max. And then the last question that they're going to ask you on the test in the question is when does the object hit the ground? And again, the way you find that is by finding the zeros, the intercepts, the solutions, and the, what else is there, the roots of the problem which is by using the quadratic formula. In this problem, a is negative 16, b is 12, and c is 30. You then have your negative b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which we then do as negative 12 plus or minus square root of who knows what, uh, 12 squared minus 4 negative 16 30 which is 2064 all over 2 times negative 16 because we're not going to actually try to do this on paper because again it doesn't matter about whether what, what the answer looks like we actually want a decimal answer I'm just going to simplify this to here and type it in the way that we learned yesterday so negative 12 plus square root 2064 equals divided by negative 32 equals ooh, did I just do something wrong? Yeah, I did do something wrong. Negative 12 plus square root of 2064 equals divided by negative 32 equals didn't make any sense. Negative 1.04 so again that's time before I threw it and then we want to go back and do negative 12 minus square root of 2064 equals divided by negative 32 equals and it says here that it took 1.79 seconds for it to reach the ground again the two times it hit the ground was at negative 1.04 and at positive 1.79 this answer makes no sense the other answer has to be it. Again, make sure you get some practice on this. Make sure you uh, ask your questions. We are going to change your uh, work for the week because I'll be gone Tuesday. So Tuesday will actually be your quiz. Sorry to give you a quiz at the end of a part there, but I'll probably make it something where you can uh, use some notes or something like that. I don't know. But other than that, I will be gone. Uh, but other than that, tomorrow we will actually do 4.6C to get that out of the way so that after you do your quiz, we can have our couple of review days. So go ahead and go to your Math Excel 
and let's go ahead and get started. Good luck.